Hi everyone, my name is Fabrício Buzeto, but you can call me Fabs, and I'm going to present today uh, about how open source helped my career. Um, and this is the, the story of an average person. Uh, if you're expecting here to hear about uh, a hero's journey, so this is not the place. Uh, we are very used to listen to stories of how people uh, overcome their hardships and how they achieve success and how they manage to uh, get to a new level. Uh, of course, I'm going to tell about uh, how, how open source uh, helped me to improve my career, uh, but this is not a hero's journey. There is no end to it. Uh, there are some lessons along the way, uh, but it's not my intention here to present everything as how every hardship uh, managed to, to help me achieve some kind of success in my life. Uh, but I hope you enjoy. And even though it's not a hero's journey, it's an average person's journey. And it can be a quite uh, enjoyable ride. So first of all, my intention today is to uh get away a bit from this small circle that we used to talk about that is famous open source people uh there are many many presentations about how these persons uh achieve a success how they contributed to the community uh, how their projects uh, helped other people and this is good and i don't see this as a bad thing but there is too much content about it and also we have a lot of content about how people uh, can achieve a status of a full-time person in the open source community how can they uh, become uh, a full-time worker in this area and these are very very important people uh, but this is also not my intention here uh, my intention is to focus on uh, the other circles in our life that is people that are occasionally working with uh, open source like an occasional contributor, people that once of in a while they, they do something related to open source, or general tech people that they don't even see themselves as part of the open source community or the open source environment. Uh, and also other people that are not in tech, that they live in a world where open source influence their in may have an influence in their lives, uh, then they're not aware. So these are the people that I'm trying to focus here. Um, and I believe the, the examples that I have here, they can help uh, drive a little bit these outer circles uh, towards the inner circles a little bit. And if I can manage to do that, I'll be very, very pleased. Uh, starting with myself, uh, I want to, to tell you that I'm, I'm a full-time developer. I've been coding since 2002. Uh, this presentation is full of my personal opinions, so be warned about that. Uh, of course, I have the influence of friends and other people that I talk about how open source changed their lives and how open source is part of their lives. And this, of course, changes how I see open source and how I see the contributions of open source in my life. But it's worth noticing that uh, when you have a, a space of one person uh, it can be quite biased, uh, but still, I think it's enjoyable and I think it's worth uh, talking about. So let's go. Uh, I come from this small place called Brasilia. It's the capital city of Brazil. Uh, and I, I think it's worth talking about because my career in computer science starts here. My career as a coder person starts here. And since it's the capital of the Brazil, uh, it's a place where politics takes a huge part and the public sector is very, very strong. Uh, because of the public sector, I got my first contact with uh, computing. So back in the 90s, my father worked in one of the, the computing companies uh, for the government and I got in contact with my first computer, which was a mainframe back then. And I didn't know anything about it, but I loved and I said, okay, so I want to work with computers because they sound fun. 
and I spent most of my time unaware of what open source was. Uh, most of what I knew was how computers worked. I loved uh, disassembled and assembled them, and I got interested in them. And I even remember one funny story that for me, uh, back then, there was just one single open, uh, operational system, which was Windows back then. And I remember one friend asking me, oh, do you know Linux? And I uh, was back in 95. And I said, what's Linux? And he said, no, it's an operational system. And I said, what's an operational system? And he said, it's just like Windows. And I was like, no, no, there is just Windows and DOS, which like Windows. And he said, no, 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 it's a different one. And when he showed me, I said, okay, it's just like DOS. <laughs> and I wasn't aware of open source until I got into the university. When I got into university, I first had my contact uh, with open source. And most of my contact of, with open source, my first contact of open source in the university was back again, the fight between operational systems. So it was Windows versus Linux. And most of the people in the university was talking how Linux was better, how Linux was uh, brought you more freedom. And there was this whole discussion how the movement of open source could help you uh, improve uh, in your career as a developer and that everybody should take part in it. And I think this whole discussion uh, was very nice for me as, a, as a, a young developer to know because you have this sense of uh, how th this profession that you are taking part of uh, is involved in something bigger and when you see that movement, you, you, you can feel that uh, you can uh, take more part and be more involved in bigger things. Uh, and it was back then that I, I started working with Linux. And, and the, the feeling of working with Linux back then was very hacky. And it reminded me of how hackers uh, work it in, when you are in, in, in the movies because uh, hackers are always using the terminal and you have to remember the commands and you're always trying to compose things and trying to, to solve these little puzzles. Um, so this was very fun and this incited me to, to learn more and know more and have this whole mu movement around it was very, very helpful for me as a developer uh, and it was a gateway to, to learn more about what is open source and how open source works and the university was also a very nice uh, environment to learn about it because there was many people uh, involved in this area in talking about it and presenting and you have very uh, many conferences and presentations and talks uh, so this was very helpful for me as a developer uh, but not for everyone because when you talk about open source in this way uh, and you have all this discussion about what's free in open source, uh, the, the different degrees of freedom, the different licenses and uh, how, how this is a movement, it sounds fun and interesting if you, are, you get hooked to it. But if somebody had see this, as a, an, a friction point, uh, it's just a barrier to understand what's open source. And especially when you talk about uh, open source uh, as a movement, uh, I, I come from a country that has uh, many, many problems with uh, different types of movement, especially socialist movements. And people were thinking, what about this free stuff? How, how can we make money? How, how you be survive? If, if it's not a product or something. And it was very hard for some people to accept open source because ah, if it's free, it's low quality. If it's free, uh, how people will be paid to do this? Uh, is it a socialist software movement? Uh, how does it work? Uh, so this is one of the barriers that we saw, uh, that I saw uh, with many people in uh, with open source. So even among my friends in the university, not everybody was on board and they don't even want it to know. 
And like I said, most people got their first contact with Windows. And when you're saying, no, no, you have to get rid of Windows and you have to embrace the free open source environment with Linux, uh, and you're wrong about it, uh, you, you create this friction. People don't want to change. If they need to change, you have to make it as an option, not as a, an obligatory thing. So this is something that, that was very, very hard. Uh, and I think it was a mistake uh, on how the movement, uh, especially where I was, uh, presented itself. And for me, this is the first contact that most people have with open source is as the operation systems. Uh, most people outside development, uh, they are not aware, uh, aware of what an operational system is. Uh, even nowadays, if you're mo most people <laughs> will not even think about their computers, they will think about uh, when they think about computers in, in general, they'll think about their cell phones. And both uh, major uh, operational systems today, they are based on open source, even though Mac OS is, is closed, uh, it has a huge contribution from open source. And people are, are uh, in, involved and they are, they are impacted by open source even today. And when, and even today we create the, this kind of friction where people, oh, if you want to be a true developer, you have to choose Mac OS if you, or otherwise you are losing time configuring lots of things. Or if you're a true developer, you have to use Linux. You should not use Windows. Uh, so this kind of friction, it's very harmful. And me, myself, I see that the operation system should be free. What we should be focusing here is how all these operation, operational systems today, they have contributions from open source, from Windows to Mac to Linux, even though the degrees of, uh, of contributions are different, all these companies have involvement in open source. And we can use this as, uh, as leverage to introduce people to why open source is important uh, instead of creating this kind of friction. And understand this was a very important moment to myself because this opened up to, to have more conversation instead uh, of have conversation as I, I would just bully uh, another person that is developing because that person likes to use Windows. Uh, and convince them to use Linux. I'll just embrace that they use Windows and ask about uh, what, what other contributions they can have. There are many open source uh, platforms that they can use in, in Windows that will help them. Uh, so instead of get them away from open source, they can get closer to open source. Uh, so after the, 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 this period in the universe, uh, I started uh, learning a bit about Java. And Java back then was a huge deal, was the main uh, object-oriented programming language. Uh, and for a beginner like myself, it uh, was, uh, was very nice to, to learn something that helped me to improve my coding skills. And since I was in, uh, in the capital city of the country, uh, there are many corporate uh, initiatives that involved Java. So it was very easy to, to get a job using Java back then. Uh, so I started coding Java, got a job involved in it. And, uh, and even though Java is, is not a, a symbol of open source as a language, uh, it has a huge community around open source. Um, and I remember back then that the, the, the most iconic one was Apache. Apache has a huge library of, uh, of components that you could use with Java, and they were all open source. And you had many others outside Apache that we could, could cite on, like JUnit and others. And this got me hooked up. Like even though I was working in a corporate environment with many uh, paid and paywalled uh, options, uh, I worked with uh, even a closed uh, implementations of Java, like. Oracle, uh, Oracle back then, now everything is Oracle. Um, but this got me interested in, in open source. And one of the things that uh, most interested me here is that learning more about this language that incentivized people to create and contribute within open source made me 
more involved in, in, in this community. And then I started looking for other uh, languages. In most languages today, they are open source. So the major language today, like Ruby, Python, and JavaScript, all of them are open source. And they are the first contact that you're going to have. Most developers today, they are going to start with an open source language. Uh, and you, 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 you get involved with it. And this is a, a very good start if you, if you want to, to bring people in and make them more involved uh, with software development and especially software development in open source. So this is the second stage that I believe everybody should take a, a part on. After that, uh, again on Apache, I remember my first time contributing with open source. So I remember when J JSF was uh, released, uh, uh, the first implementation was made available by Apache. And the first implementation was very buggy, very unstable. And I was looking for some kind of way to, to make something work. I have this bug in my code and I could not find it. Uh, so I just download the code and in, in, get involved with the code, reading it and debugging it. I found this very characteristic code. It was like uh, six or seven uh, if statements, uh, uh, one inside the other. And I just made my first contribution there. And I managed to patch it up, send a contribution, and I felt so, so amazing because like I, I could fix something in a library that was not mine and I really needed for that work that I need to, to present and to, to deliver to, to my client. And there was not much uh, bureaucracy involved because uh, when I, I did this, I did just for my project and then I just submitted uh, but I could use for my project my fix, my patch, without needing the permission from the Apache uh, Foundation to use it. Uh, so it felt amazing. And most people have the same situation. So today, the major platforms that I've been using, like Rails or Meteor or Django, uh, they are all open source, and anyone can just download it. Uh, get to see the code, they can, can debug it and find things that they can improve and get better at it. Uh, so <clears throat> with uh, Rails, for example, uh, I did many, many patches in many internal structures within Rails. So I didn't have to wait for the next, uh, sub, uh, next version to, to improve it. Uh, the same with others like Django and Meteor. So platforms and frameworks, they are the second best thing that people can, can use to, to improve and to, to get better and get this new contact with open source. So if you look at the world today, we have 27 million software developers in the world. Uh, almost half of them have a GitHub account, uh, but not most of them are actively contributing with open source. Um, this is not a huge issue, but this shows how unbalanced this is. Uh, uh, not everybody will have the, the, the urge to, to contribute, and we should not expect that. Uh, I'm not saying, uh, of course, that all GitHub accounts uh, or having a GitHub account is necessary to, to contribute, but this is a good proxy to evaluate the numbers. And we have a huge amount of, of projects, like we have more than 50 million open source projects in the world right now, and they're growing. Um, most of the, the, the new developers, the, the, the world uh, sees like one, 1 1.5 million new developers coming to the market every year. And not, not everyone will contribute with one of these projects. Uh, but when we compare with the working population, we have more than 3 billion people in the working population of the world. Uh, we developers are a very, very small, small part of them. And we should not expect everyone uh, to be contributing uh, with code. Um, and especially because we should look at uh, open source uh, 
not as just uh, the type of project that we're doing or the type of code that we're building. Uh, we should look at open source as one of the ways that we can build software, uh, as we can build products, uh, because it's one of the main strategies that are available. Uh, being open source uh, can be a huge advantage in giving this kind of build to people outside uh, coding people. Uh, it's very, very important. Uh, and this is becoming more and more clear to, to uh, more areas uh, of, of software development. As we can see, many top companies nowadays, they embrace open source. Uh, these are one of the top companies that they have as their core uh, open source products that everybody can contribute, uh, opinate, and uh work uh, around it they have huge communities they have huge uh, ecosystems that are built around their software and being open source made them more valuable because of this strategy and we see more and more of these companies every day and this is happening not because only developers are involved in, in open source no, this is happening because we have more people around and involved with developers making this decision. We have CEOs, we have uh, product people, we have designers, we have CX people. And these people, they are also seeing that open source can be a valuable strategy. Uh, for example, uh, Y Combinator, one of the biggest uh, accelerators in the world, uh, at least 10% of the the companies that they invested in the past couple of years uh, have been involved in products that are open source first, which means that open source is the main drive of their product, the main version of their product. We can cite MongoDB, PostHog, and many others that the basis is something that is open and free for everybody to contribute, but they are still a company that makes money and they can nurture that that community around it so the idea here is to show that it's uh, uh, being around open source and being involved in open source is a good strategy to build good products and also to build good companies and showing other people uh, that this is a possible solution that's a possible path that should be involved of course we should not uh, forget about major product projects in open source that are not necessarily a commercial or involved in a company specifically. We have many great products and many great software that are built uh, around these communities. And they go from small products uh, that uh, you can use in your everyday to, to big products that are the basis of uh, great companies. And they are all open source. They are not commercial in any, any way. And giving visibility to these products is important, is one of the main uh, things that we do as a community to share the, 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 the situations and the, these products. Uh, but it's also important to, to phrase that this is one of the strategies that are available to us. Now talking a bit about the path that we can have uh, to get more contact with open source, right? Uh, so usually when we're talking about open source, we, we focus a lot on these two uh, last items. So we focus on creating new open source software or projects or contributing to open source projects and, and software. And this is good and all because uh, new projects, they, they are fun, uh, they, they address new problems and they are what will uh, improve the, the community, bringing uh, new solutions, uh, new contributions, and new ways for us to, to address problems that we have. Uh, but this is not the only way. Uh, we have other ways that we can uh, make our way through the, through the open source community and improve and help other people to get involved as well. And for me, the first thing that we need to do if we want to, to get involved in, in open source is to use. And I consider everybody that is using open source to be part of the community. 
because they are needed. If, if you don't have users, uh, you're not delivering value. And this is important for a commercial software as well as an open source software. Uh, so using is the first part. If people are using, you have a real problem and you are delivering value and you are part of that community as well. And after you start using, you can start learning about that software. And learning, it's great because it, may, it means that you are interested in improving how you're using that software. It means that you are involved enough to, to get to know more and, and to get deeper knowledge about how that can be used in new contexts, in new problems, and how can you push to the limits what you're using. Uh, so to give an example, when you start to use Linux, you can use Linux as just a user. You know nothing. For you, Linux is just a way to access the internet. You don't need nothing to know about Linux. Uh, but then you can start learning more and learning how Linux works, how the package works, how can you improve, how can you customize, how can you make it do some more tasks for you, how can you automate things. So as you learn, you can uh, you, you you get to know more how that that, that piece of software can uh, be part of your life. And the more you learn, the more you want to share. And as you share, you bring more people in. And when you bring more people in, you expand the community. So learning and sharing is how we grow as a community, as an open source community. And like I told you, when I was in the university, uh, somebody told me about how the movement of open source was going in the university and how I could get involved. And that person that got me involved, they were deep into the, this movement and they were learning more about it so using learning and sharing should be as uh, incentivized as contributing and creating because they are the the previous steps the base steps that you need before you can then decide to contribute uh, to an existing open source com uh, software or to create your own i'm not telling you that you need to go all through all these steps to create your own open source com uh, software no you can do, you can jump out the, the steps. There is no limits here. Uh, I'm just saying that usually we just focus on this last two. And this is very limiting, especially when you're considering uh, how broad the, the, the open source uh, can, uh, uh, value can, uh, can impact people in the world. Like I show in the beginning with the circles and how everybody uh, is contributing, we can focus more uh, on more people if we ease the barrier for people to enter. So when we start to look for ways for people to use it, to learn about it and to share it, we are easing these barriers and we are making more people interested in open source. And we don't need to everybody say that we are talking about this. Uh, we just need to talk about the software itself. And people will get involved and know how this is important uh, for them because people care about their problems and if we're bringing a solution to them they will care about the solution that we're bringing and then they'll get involved uh, and how are the ways that we can do this uh, the, the the main way is to create a community so a community is a good way for us to to gather people around a common goal a common problem a common context and to share how we how we're solving that problems and being part of community is very important uh, because it, it's a support uh, group that can help people uh, to to keep uh, using what you're uh, what you're developing what that community is developing and also to improve how, what is being developed uh, another way to contribute is to teach uh, so when you teach something, uh, you're making more people aware of how to use the software and how to, to solve their problems with that software. And also when you teach, you learn a lot about their, their problems. You can learn about the boundaries of the software being developed uh, or the, the, the problems that you can, you can uh, solve or can 
customize. And another way is to write. So blog posts, books, uh, guides, tutorials, everything that you write about the software makes it uh, as another way for you to, to share about it and to contribute. And finally, to talk about it when you talk with a friend or you share. So these are other ways that you can contribute with the, the open source community with an open source software that is not effectively coding. Uh, we usually only focus on coding on, and coding is very important. Without code, the software will not exist. Uh, but you also need to, to focus on other things and people can contribute with many other ways. And these are some of these ways that we can expand uh, an open source community uh, without needing to explicitly coding, uh, especially because I think we don't value as much uh, these other contributions and they are as valuable as, uh, as coding. So everybody that is teaching about how to use uh, Rails or Django, they are as important as, as people that are coding these platforms because they are, uh, they are expanding the community around it and they are expanding the people that are using, they are expanding their use cases. And this makes, like every time you teach somebody to use Rails, uh, you're making Rails more important because more people use it, uh, more people will be incentivized to, to contribute it. Uh, also the people that are coding in Rails, they'll see that their software as more valuable because there are more people using and more problems being solved. So everybody wins. So teaching is as important as coding as well, as well as people that are talking about it. Because if somebody didn't tell me about uh, Django, I'll never know about it and I'll never use it. And I'll never know how great it is and how I could use it to, to improve my, my ways into software development. So it, we need to, to value this contribution as much as the others. So let's recall about the ways that we can uh, get involved uh, or get in contact with uh, open source. So the first channel that we have is operating systems. Usually it's the first one that people get involved in open source even without knowing about it. And we need to take care about the, the, how, how we, we get, in, uh, get people hooked. Uh, the second is programming languages. Usually people get involved with open source with a programming language, usually an open source programming language. Later on, in, with platforms and frameworks that we get introduced them to open source. Uh, my hope here is that we manage to, to improve a little bit the circles and uh, get a little bit of the people in the in the tech community as an occasional open source pe uh, people would be great. But even if I get a little bit closer to that circle, I'll be very, very much happy. Uh, so thanks a lot for for being with him today. And I'm open to, to comments and questions. Uh, feel free to reach me out. Here are my contacts, feel free. I'll be glad to, to answer any questions or just talk about what I talked today. So thanks a lot. Bye-bye.